Let's head over now to Akure, the state capital, where the resident electoral commissioner in Ondo State is standing by. I'm joined by Mrs. Uluwatui Babalola. Thank you for joining us on the program this evening. Let's begin with a recent development regarding the Liberal Party candidate. We're hearing that the Court of Appeal has set aside the Federal High Court judgment restoring Olorun Femi Festus as candidate of the party. Can you confirm this update? I can't. I'm asking if you can confirm the update with the change in name for the Liberal Party candidate ahead of the election tomorrow. Okay. And uh, the name has changed to the name of the former candidate based on the order of the Court of Appeal. Clarify for us the implications of this new development for tomorrow's election. Well, uh, that will be the development is going to be in respect of their supporters. For us, we are used to receiving court orders of this nature because it is a court order. We need to obey it. The last candidate that was there was brought in by court order. So this new candidate too is coming in by court order. We have received the mail telling us, forwarding a new li list of candidates to us. Who is saddled with the responsibility then of informing the electorate about this change, considering it's happening on election eve? It is the candidates, it is the, it is the beneficiary of the judgment that will mobilize supporters. INEC does not mobilize supporters, we mobilize voters generally. All right, let's talk about INEC's level of preparedness for this election. Are there any concerns or areas of focus that you are paying particular attention to? For now, um, talking about the business of today, which is to mobilize to the registration area centers. We started doing that very early today, and we're almost rounding up. You know, over um, like 70, over, almost over 80 percent of our rack centers are open. Others are on their way. Indeed. Um, the issue of logistics, prompt distribution of voting materials, and getting the beavers to work seamlessly are key performance indices for INEC in elections of this nature. Uh, what have you done to deliver on these objectives? For the beavers, we have deployed 4,002 by modal voter accreditation system to the local governments. They have been charged, they have been configured, we have done quality assurance, and they have been in the local governments since yesterday. They have been deployed to the registration areas, and we'll use them tomorrow. We also have 812 as backup in case there is any issue with the beavers. Aside from this, we have registration area technicians in every registration area to provide technical support in case there is any issue with the beavers in the registration area. Just for some clarity, Mrs. Babalola, some are reporting that there are 17 candidates in this election. Are there 17 or 18 in total? There are 18 candidates. 18 candidates. All right. Um, thank you for th that confirmation. Um, another concern for stakeholders in this election are River Rhine areas. What has INEC done differently this time to address, uh, address challenges, ensuring that um, voters can cast their votes, uh, their ballots rather, without hindrance in those areas. What we did, we are already aware that we have communities on water. We move them by land and they continue the journey by water. We have engaged boats and the Navy is giving us security support 
to move them to their various locations. Do you anticipate that results in these areas will delay collation uh, post-voting tomorrow? There are a lot of determining factors. If um, voters turn out early, early turnout of voters, the population of voters in each PU will determine when voting will be concluded in each polling unit. As you are aware, whoever is on the queue at 2.30 must be attended to. So if voters come out on time and they are able to cast their vote on time, by 2.30, we shouldn't have too many people on queue, too many voters on queue. What about the issue of um, security? Does the commission have any particular concerns in that regard? especially the security of the personnel in this election? Or what kind of assurance are you getting from security operators? The security agencies have given us assurance. As at this morning, the AIG um, noted that they were deploying over 33,000 security personnel for the election. And the most of them Nearly all of them have reported at the local government. I've not received any report of shortage of security personnel from any local government. Did you get adequate security uh, personnel for the distribution of sensitive materials earlier? Yes, when we were distributing sensitive materials yesterday, we had enough security personnel and they escorted all the, all the sensitive materials from the central bank to the various local governments yesterday. Let's talk about some more personal issues because your name has been highlighted in the days preceding this election. A particular political party has continued to raise concerns about your integrity, citing potential biases. How do you respond to these allegations? I work under authority and I work with the Independent National Electoral Commission. My commission has responded adequately to issues raised concerning me and I'm satisfied with their response. Speak to us specifically the steps that your commission is taking uh, to ensure transparency and impartiality during the electoral process. During the electoral process, one of the first steps towards transparency is to make sure that in all we do, we carry, on, carry along all our critical stakeholders. We hold regular consultative meetings with the security, political parties, civil society organizations, and regular briefing with the media. All our activities are open and transparent to all stakeholders, and our offices are open for any uh, stakeholder to seek clarification or get any information from us. What's the timeline for that clarification? Because usually what we see at the coalition center, or rather what we hear, Zynex saying that you take these concerns to our offices. Um, these these allegations, these concerns, what is the channel? How do stakeholders reach INEC, for instance, during an election process? Well, it depends on what you mean by stakeholders. At coalition centers, uh, there are specific it, I, persons I, 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 that are person. accredited. Yes, there are, we have accredited persons that are allowed to be in a coalition center. And we have the media, we have the political parties, we have civil society groups, we have observers. When they have any concern, if you have a concern in the local government that needs to be dealt with in the state, definitely they will tell you that it will be taken up to the state to be dealt with. If there are concerns 
that, can, that is beyond an average supervisor. They will always take you to the next level. And I don't think there's any concern that will not be dealt with. With staggered elections like this, we see that INEC deploys, you know, more senior officials like national commissioners to, you know, states where elections are holding. I must understand the organogram. Who oversees this election? Who do you answer to? This for this election, there is a resident electoral commissioner to superintend the election. But by the policy of INEC, for such elections, when we have off-circle elections, the commission usually deploys national commissioners and resident electoral commissioners from other states to support the election. And this is to add to the integrity of the process and to give support to make sure the election is successful. It is the tradition of INEC. It is the policy of the commission. So they are coming as supporters, but they are also national commissioners. Yes. They answered. Yes. I have answered they have come for support. All right. So at what point do you hand over to the returning officer? At what point does the, uh, uh, does the work of the resident electoral commissioner end in this election process? The resident electoral commissioner does not collate any result. Um, collation starts from the registration area center, so registration areas. Results from polling units are taken to the registration areas, and there is a collation officer at the registration area to collate the results from the polling units. The registration area collation officer takes the result to the local government, where the local government collation officer collates the results from the registration areas. After which, the local government collation area, area uh, officer brings the results to the state. And at the state level, there is a state collation officer who also doubles as the returning officer, not the resident electoral commissioner. All right, just before we let you go, what message would you like to convey to all the residents voting tomorrow, and how can they report any concerns or irregularity? Um, my message to the citizens that are registered to vote is that they should come out in mass. They should believe in the process, cast their vote peacefully, and believe that every vote in this state we count. If they have reasons to complain, we have our channels, if they check our channels, we have INEC Citizen Contact Center, INEC Citizen Contact Center, and we also have our EOSC platform to which people can send complaints and they will be attended to. We have our own situation room too. I will be taking complaints from the EOSC and also from our centers. Mrs. Oluwa Toimbabalola is the resident electoral commissioner in Ondo State. Thank you for talking to us and we wish you the best. Thank you very much. After this break, I'll be joined by uh, the 4th PM.